morning. morning. Welcome to worship. Glad you're here today on what I consider one of the prettiest days in our uh, sanctuary uh, out, of, out of the year. So happy quilt blessing day. Um, I'm used to this in other churches happening once a year, but we do it twice a year here because, well, they're a little prolific in our quilting room. Um, we had 160 quilts that we dedicated back in, was it June? Um, so we did 160 quilts back then. How much can you possibly get done between June and now? Well, evidently it's about 160 quilts. So, um, so far this year, um, our quilting group has done over 300 quilts. And it is, it is impressive, it is beautiful, and I'm, I'm really grateful to them. Anybody willing to stay after for a few minutes and fold up the quilts, get them stacked up so we can get them shipped off to where they need to go? Uh, there, your help will be greatly appreciated after worship. Uh, just stick around. Um, we have uh, some announcements. Uh, Children's Church, uh, did we have a teacher today? Do we know? Okay, okay, we have a teacher. So Children's Church is happening. Uh, thank you, Heather and Mike. I know you just volunteered when she volunteered. So thank you. Uh, so we got Children's Church happening today. Uh, we do need a teacher for December 10th. Uh, everything else till the end of the year is uh, fully taken. So if you are interested in helping teach during that time, please uh, uh, do uh, sign up out, out here or ask Heather or myself how it works. We'll tell you all about it. Um, so next slide, please. Uh, well Water Disciple, which is our men's group, uh, they get together once a month, and it's the... It's generally the third Tuesday, I believe. This, uh, it's this coming Tuesday. They'll be at Altered State Distillery. Um, goes from 6, six o'clock till whenever you decide to leave. So, men, you're, you are definitely welcome to be present there. Next slide is uh, church office to be closed on Thanksgiving. Sort of makes sense, right? Uh, so happy and blessed Thanksgiving to all of you. We won't be here. But on that little note, let me add this in. Uh, you can call the church office, you can get to my voicemail here. If it is an urgent pastoral matter, if it is something you're having an issue of conscience, someone's in the hospital, and uh, someone, someone's on death's doorstep, um, my, my cell phone is on my voicemail here at church. Call me, 24-7, uh, my phone is on all the time. Um, now, if you call me at 10 o'clock at night to ask when the church picnic is, next time we get together, we'll be planning your funeral. So, uh, definitely use my phone accordingly during regular business hours, uh, Saturday through Wednesday. I try to take Thursday and Friday off as my weekend. But use that, use my cell phone during those business hours, please. I uh, use it for after hours emergencies, please. Um, I am available to you and that's what we're here for, whether the church office is open or not. Next slide. Uh, next weekend, following this service, we are decorating this place. It is Advent decorating time. Uh, it's time to set up Christmas trees, get the lights strung through this place, get it all decorated. We need your help. It's gonna be a little bit of a party too. There's gonna be, I believe, cider, and there's gonna be um, like hot chocolate and coffee and donuts and cookies and Christmas music. So come be present and help us next week and get this place ready for Advent and for Christmas. Next slide. Um, so far, we're up over 250 pairs of socks that have been donated, plus we have tons more out there. Folks, keep up the good work. Uh, let's uh, keep people warm this, uh, this winter. Next slide. Uh, if you are interested in membership here, if this is something you're, you're considering, well, I like attending there, but I think I want to be part of the mission and ministry as a member. We're having a new member potluck on Tuesday, uh, December 5th. So if you're interested in that, we'll be meeting up in the uh, Claire Wolf Lounge, which is the building at the top of the hill. And we're having a potluck for all the people who are interested in such a thing. We're gonna go through an orientation, and from there you can decide whether you wanna be a new member or not. Uh, the following Sunday and Saturday is when we will actually install those who want to be part of the mission and ministry here. And whether you choose to be part of the mission and ministry here or not as a member, you're very welcome in this place. Next slide, Christmas poinsettias. They are available for order all the way through December 10th. Uh, reach out to the church office, I believe, um, to order those. And if I'm wrong, then someone correct me. Who do, who do we, how do we order those? 
Evidently, I'm right. So, oh, there's a form. Amy, thank you. There's a form. Forms are in the back. Thank you. So you can uh, fill those out and get those turned in. Next slide. Um, other announcements? Uh, reverse advent calendars are available out in the Narthex. Um, for those who want to do something a little special for yourself all the way through um, this Advent season where you're giving past yourself. Um, also, there is four-fifths youth group, so our fourth and fifth grade youth group meets after worship today at 1030 in our youth room. Other announcements? Marie. There was? Okay, I, I missed it too. So I will... I, it does sound cute. So I think there, there is a uh, preschool Christmas program happening. It's a Monday though, right? Is that, do, do we know? I'm asking the preschool teacher. You're on the spot. It's, during, it's for the preschool class. But folks, come listen to them sing if you got time that Monday. It's really, it's really a lot of fun. Um, so we'll get, we'll get that put up into, I think it'll be in the newsletter too that's coming out next week. Any other announcements for the good of our time? Going once, going twice? All right, I invite you to calm your hearts, calm your minds, and transition from getting here to being here. I invite you to stand as we begin our worship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see in our neighbor. You open our hands to serve your creation. Beloved, we are called God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome, and Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. And when we are completed with this prayer, please remain standing. Righteous God, our merciful Master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you at this time to move about the sanctuary, get to a quilt that does not have hands on it, and put hands on it. Let's bless the quilts around us. Let us dedicate these quilts to the mission of Christ in the world. All caring God, we dedicate to you today these quilts. May they be a sign of your life in this place and in the place where they are going. Lord, bless this quilt. Thank you, Jesus. All comforting God, let this quilt be a reminder to the one who receives it that you are always there to lay our heads upon. May we remember that it is you who shelters us from the cold that life brings. Lord, bless this quilt. Thank you, Jesus. Compassionate God, let this quilt send a message of hope to the receiver that they are not forgotten, but are cared for by your servants. Lord, bless this quilt. Thank you, Jesus. Creator God, let this quilt remind all who see it that you created everything beautifully. All colors, all shapes, all sizes were handcrafted by you. Help us to embrace all people as the wonderful creations that you have made them to be. Lord, bless this quilt. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, bless the hands of those who made these quilts. Keep their hands strong and nimble so that they can continue to serve your people with their talents. Lord, bless this quilt. Thank you, Jesus. We dedicate these quilts to you today, dear Lord trusting in your purpose and clinging to your hope. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Children, it's time for Children's Church. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day. Let us now hear the word of God through the Holy Scriptures. Our first reading today is from the first chapter of Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blasts and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the fortified and lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full, a terrible end, he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. This was the word of the Lord. 
Our second reading is from the fifth chapter of First Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But if you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of the light and children of the day, we are not of the night nor of the darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober, for those who sleep sleep at night, and those who are drunk get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and a helmet for the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. This was the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who had two talents came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. His master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to one with the ten talents. For to those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him out into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. Oh, you're so talented. You've heard that once or twice in your life, and usually it's when you're like six years old and you just finished playing Mary Had a Little Lamb on the piano. Oh, you're so talented. It's, it's very encouraging and very nice to hear. But you know when someone's got talent, though, don't you? You can just tell. There's something about them that just screams while they are cream of the crop. They are really, really good at what they do. They are talented. Here we have a gospel today about talents. And it's not what you think. I, I know how it ends. Oh, throw this rotten slave out. 
Oh, Jesus, good news of the Lord, thank you, appreciate that. But it's not what we think, it's not what we hear. There's more to this story. So let's talk about talents. Before we do, let's talk about your talents. I'll give you the bottom line up front. Every single person sitting in this place is talented. That's all there is to it. You have a talent. Now, the problem with us is we compare, don't we? We compare and contrast. Thank you, English class. We sit there and we look at things and compare ourselves to someone else. I'm a guitarist. Um, I'm a drummer. I, I like music. I'm, I'm a musician. I love music. But I hear Andrew doing his stuff, and suddenly I want to hang up my guitars and never touch them again. Because, yeah, I got talent, but, oh, he's got talent. So why should I even bother? Anyone ever feel like that? Where suddenly you're comparing yourself against someone else, and their talent is so much better than yours. Well, what are you supposed to do with it? Well, you use what you've been given and continue to develop it. See, talent, it doesn't come naturally. Maybe the beginning, I got it, comes naturally. But you even talk to the, like, protégés, um, I mean, the, uh, the, the cream of the crop guys who are good at their, let's say, instrument. Uh, a world-class violinist once shared, um, wow, you are so talented, it, it must come naturally. He goes, well, I've been practicing for about 100,000 hours, so yes, I think it's starting to come naturally. And when I practice more, I imagine I'll actually get pretty good at this. He was serious. 100,000 hours of practice. Talk to any person who is good at what they do, and they will tell you how much they have worked to get really good at it. Doctors, they run a medical perfection, right? No, they run a medical because it is something that you constantly refine your skill and you get better and better at as you go. Teachers, you are just a phenomenal teacher day one when you start, right? No, but by year 25, you finally got the hang of it, don't you? You finally get it and it, it makes sense and you're really able to communicate and, and do things and you're all starting to understand this. Aristotle says that excellence takes practice. Excellence is not an accident. It is always done with intention. This is a big part for us with talent. So, what are you doing with your talent? Let me ask you this next question as we get ready to get into this scripture. What is your talent? And why are you comparing it to other people's talents? So, here we have our gospel. Jesus compares the kingdom of God to a man who went on a trip. He's a wealthy, wealthy man, and he's going to entrust his servants, his slaves, with uh, his wealth, and he's going to trust them to do what, what he knows they're capable of, each according to their own ability. To one he gave five talents, to another he gave two talents, to another he gave one talent. So each according to their own ability. Now, slaves, um, we think you know, uneducated, you know, work in the field. No. Slavery back in this time was a six-year contract. On seventh year, you were released. But a lot of these people chose to remain slaves in the household because it's a different kind of slavery than you're thinking about. A lot of these people are educated. A lot of these people have really nice houses, a really nice way to raise their family and a lot of freedoms to do things. They just work for this corporation and belong to this corporation. And they, they've, they've decided to put in, say, this guy treats me really, really well and makes sure that I'm cared for. And when my wife got sick, he made sure she had the best doctors. And I want to stay here, but you're free. Can I remain your slave? I would be, I'd be honored to have you in my house. And so we're given actual full command of the resources of the houses to do things with on behalf of their master. So this master gets ready to go on a trip. And we're going to say a business trip, but let's be honest, he's going to Florida for six months. He gives one person five talents, one person two talents, one person one. Now, what's a talent? Let's rewind a few weeks and see how good you are. What was a day's wage back, uh, back in this time? What was it called? Anyone remember? Deny, very good. A deny was, was one day's wage, and it was a little coin about the size of a dime. And after a full year, you'd have about 300 denarii in your, in your pocket. 
That's a full year's wage. Now, a talent was what? That was a really good guess. That's close. 20 years wages. So one talent was 20 years uh, wages, so 20 times 300. Anyone want to do the math real quick? Sixty thousand. All right, give it up. There, good job. Nicely done, Aunt. Eli. Okay, so here's our next church treasurer when he gets confirmed. Um, sixty thousand. Okay, so you. It's, that's sixty thousand denarii. That's a lot of money. Let's put it in terms for Erie. You can get a job after graduating high school, making about fifteen bucks an hour, and you can go out. You can make that fifteen bucks an hour. Work forty hours a week. And after a full year, you'll have somewhere around $30,000. So we'll call $30,000 one year's wages. Now, this man entrusted this one guy with one talent, which is 20 years of $30,000. That's $600,000. $600,000. Now, anyone have $600,000 just lying around? I mean, if you do, you should be giving more to the offering plate. That's all I'm saying. That's a lot of money. That is a chunk of change. So he trusted him with $600,000. Now, to another guy, he gave two talents, $1.2 million. And to the other guy, he gave five talents, $3 million. And he says, I'm going on a trip. Take care of my money like I know you can. And the one guy went out and invested and flipped things, you know, bought a house, did, did the work, flipped it, ended up coming back. The other guy went out, took his uh, 1.2 million out, went out and flipped it, got, got money. The other guy went, man, my boss is scary. I don't want to lose any of his money. So he went and got a Folgers can and buried it in his backyard. Well, the master comes back from Florida, well tanned and well rested. He says, hey, what, how about my money? Let's see, let's see the bank account, see what you guys have done. The guy with the, with the $3 million shows up and goes, hey, boss. You can call me the $6 million man. Here you go. I doubled your money. I knew you were capable. Thank you. Well done. Come on in. I, I trust you with a little bit. Now I'm going to give you a lot. Folks, I don't know about you, but $3 million doesn't seem like a little bit to me. I'm going to trust you with more. Come on in. And really, my house is yours. The guy who was given $1.2 million came back. He said, Sir, I almost made $2.5 million in total for you, your money plus what I invested and got back for you. So here, $2.4 million. Wow. Nicely done. I knew you were trustworthy. Come on in. My house is yours. Now, here comes the guy with $600,000. Hands his boss a dirty coffee can. What's this? I, I was afraid that I'd lose any of your money, so I, I didn't lose any of it. Here it all is back, every single penny you gave me. See, you can trust me. You took what I gave you and you buried it in the ground where it did no good for anybody? What were you thinking? I trust you. I know what you're capable of. I gave you over a half million dollars to go and work with, and if you would have lost, at least you would have tried, and I would have loved the effort. But... You just showed me who you are. You, you're out of my house. I, I, I don't want you here anymore. I can't trust you with my money because you did nothing with it. Folks, this right here is the lesson for us. What are you doing with your talents? Are you out investing and working and using those talents to make more, to grow your talent? Are you practicing those 100,000 hours so you can get better and better? Are you investing daily into your skill? Are you watching YouTube and trying to get better at what you're doing? Are you figuring this out for yourself? Because your talent is needed in this place. You have something specific that God's kingdom needs. You have a gift set that the people around you do not have. Now, I can tell you that, Andrew, correct me if I'm wrong, but I play guitar better than you. Oh, yeah. See? <laughs> I mean, it helps that he doesn't play guitar. Um, <laughs> but that right there is a, a piece here. What you have to do 
Folks, that right there makes the difference in this place. Your skill set, if it gets buried in the background, does no one hear any good? Does God's kingdom no good at all? But God only gave me one talent compared to Andrew's five. Yeah, well, use that one talent. God gave you something to use. Use it and grow it and get better at it so that way there's a return on investment for God's kingdom. Folks, we compare ourselves too much to other people. Use that comparison as a, huh, if they can do it, I, I'm sure I can get to it too. Use that as a challenge to yourself to show you what you're capable of in God's kingdom. You have something specific. What is that talent? And how are you investing it on God's behalf? Amen? Let's stand and sing. Let us confess together that which we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. turn our hearts to God, our breath and our life, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Gracious God, you give talents and gifts to all people, and you equip the church to serve. Turn us from fear and self-serving ways that we may use our talents to glorify you and encourage our neighbor. 
Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You've been our dwelling place from one generation to another. Sustain the life of the planet. Protect farmlands and harvests. Direct all people in wise stewardship of all the Earth's resources. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You call us to honesty and integrity. Instill these values in the hearts of all nations and their leaders. Free any who are oppressed. Expose all corruption and bring redemption to victims of injustice. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Where there is sickness or sorrow, bring healing. Where there is loneliness, reveal your love in community. We remember before you, especially, Don Buzzard, Sean Conrad, Janet Sear, Emma Cunningham, Marsha Samanowitz, Lee Amy, Lois Gilbert, Marsha Grace, Mary Hetrick, Phyllis Kennedy, Karen Laufer, Pastor Mack, Jim Price, Len Toy, Gary, our homebound members and friends of St. Paul's, Laura Danielson, Walt Hitchcock, Tom Lemasters, Chris Staltenstall, Bunny Manning, Tom Matthew, Joyce Morshauser, Bill Muntz, Leslie Payne, Chip Roward, Lee Schwartzfeger, Jamie Tech, Alan V, Carol, Rob, and for all those we name aloud and in our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for the faith formation ministries of our church. Give to all children, youth, and adults who study your word the breastplate of faith and love. Shape us by your love and show us how to encourage one another. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. May you greet each other with the sign of peace. Let's go now to the banquet, to the feast of the universe. The table set and the place is waiting. Come, everyone, with your gifts to share. God invites all the poor and hungry to the banquet of justice and good. With the harvest will not be hoarded, so that no one will lack for food. Let us go now. Let us pray together. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them that, as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant, Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven,
We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy. Jesus, the one who sent his disciples out two by two with their talents to change the world, was gathered with those same disciples the night which was betrayed. There at supper he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Every time you eat bread, every time, remember me. After supper he took the cup when he given thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This is my blood shed for you. It's a new covenant for the forgiveness of all your sins. Every time you drink wine, every time, remember me. We remember our Lord in the bread, the wine, and the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for a few instructions. Uh, we will be commuting at, at the rail, so you may stand or kneel as is your uh, tradition. And when you come forward, uh, we ask that this side come down and start at the center and fill out that way. This side, you come down the center and fill in from this rail to the center. And uh, when you come forward, there's bread, but there's also a gluten-free option if you need it. Uh, wine is in the red container, or the red glasses that are on the outside of the tray, with grape juice being in the center. So there is room at God's table for you. Come and eat. There's place ready. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth.
Please stand for the blessing. Our, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray together. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children. And give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, Sovereign, Savior, and Spirit be with you today and always.